Good morning, guys. News from Campi Flegri, and I don't know if we like these news. So there's a new earthquake swarm going on, but the INGV has given us in their ways an explanation for the bubbling road that I have shown you in my last video. A road that is close to the Solfatara, a road that they basically built through the volcano. Was that smart? Well, along that road, there's many, many buildings and infrastructure, businesses, VW dealerships. So that's why they're building right on the volcano. But now the INGV said, we have looked at that because that road looks really like it's melting. The volcano underneath is melting the asphalt and it's like creating these bubbles. And this time it were a lot of bubbles. We've seen this in the past few months and in the past year that there have been holes breaking up and that their steam has come out. There have been and cracks and they have been paved over it, repaired it, and then it happened again and they paved over it. They said, ah, oh, this is just a collapsed manhole, no biggie. And then the volcano came again. And this time, I don't know, guys, let me know in the comments. It looks like the volcano says, stop that. Now I'm really creating a lot of bubbles to show you that I'm here. So earthquake swarm, just right now, Mayor of Pozzuoli released a statement, earthquake swarm ongoing as we speak. I will get into this later. I want to talk about the bubbles first, because this road has really been deformed and blistered, as they call it. And you see now this picture with that deep purple area where the lighter areas are, the, the yellow areas, that's the Solfatara crater. There we have most of the active fumaroles, the hot fumaroles, and then we have the Pischiarelli area. We also have stuff going on there. And then we have the via Antignano. This is actually the area in that curve there where the volcano has been creating problems on and on and on. We've seen dealerships and covered in steam from these fumaroles. So now they have sent their engineers and their team to look at that. So they have done thermal images that has been done by the Vesuvius Observatory. They're local, they're part of the INGV. They're observing this volcano in Naples 24 seven. This is one of the best surveilled super volcanoes in the world. And then they have flown a drone over it. And the maximum temperature they say that they could measure in the road is 55.4 degrees Celsius. So they say there is no significant increase in temperature. But we're wondering why is the road melting then more extremely than previously? The bubbles on the asphalt on the Via Antignana and Pozzoli in the Flegrean fields, Campi Flegri, the burning fields, the super volcano in Naples, Italy, um, we see the images of that deformation that is affecting the road that runs alongside the crater, the Solfatara crater. It's You don't want to drive over that, right? You don't know what's underneath. Is there a sinkhole opening? Could the asphalt sink in in, in, a, in a bigger hole than it has previously done? This is a book. The Solfatara is a volcanic crater. So the population, this is what the Italian press is reporting, has been deeply shocked by this. And of course, if you live in Pozzoli, that's the red zone. And that is, depending on how you define this, we're talking about 80,000 to 500,000 people in the direct danger zone, should there be something smaller happening at that volcano, something bigger than we're talking about roughly 6 million people in the greater Naples area. And the scientists say, Giuseppe Di Natale, he works for the INGV. He just recently said in a press interview, we have to expect a volcanic eruption. We can't rule that out. So, of course, if you then live on the volcano, because Campi Flegre is not like Vesuvius, this, the strato volcano, it's more flat. It spans over 100 kilometers. People live on it. Of course, you're scared. And then these continuous earthquake swarms all the time, one after the other. I always say it continuously, in my opinion. But the, the, the intervals between these earthquake swarms become shorter and shorter. We have higher and higher magnitudes. 
So that has gone viral on social media and people were very, very worried. That's why on just yesterday, INGV said we will look at that. National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV, um, has decided to investigate this time. They haven't really done that before when the road opened up. So they sent their scientists and researchers to conduct surveys on Tuesday, September 30th. And now they're telling us what they discovered. The agency has published the analysis report and it's also signed by the INGV director, Lucia Papalardo. So the subject of this study is called Asphalt Swelling Phenomena on Via Antitiniana, the so-called bubbles. And you know, they always call this phenomena. And they're also always talking about the Brady seismic phenomena. Brady seism, what is Brady seism? This is the land rise that is happening there, the increased earthquake activity, increased fumarole activity, gas emissions. But Brady seism is not the problem. What is causing this is the problem, and that's the volcano. So I don't, phenomena always sounds like, yeah, there's something going on. We don't know what it is, but it's not so bad. It's not really a phenomena, it's a super volcano that is creeping towards eruption. This is a volcanic crisis. I would say volcanic crisis instead of Brady seismic phenomena. And this is, is this really an asphalt swelling phenomena or is this also a volcanic signal? Really? Right? Or would you say, as part of that volcanic crisis, now the asphalt is bubbling? You know, stop making it sound harmless. More harmless than it is, in my opinion. And start thinking about how to save these people. Because the problem is, the major artery where all their evacuation is based on is the Via Tangenziale di Napoli. That's a road with a lot of bridges with tall columns. And they haven't upgraded the road fully yet. This takes years. So should there be an eruption, we could see bigger earthquakes. This road would be highly at risk of collapsing in some parts. So now if you have more than 500,000 people in the red zone, according to their new evacuation plan that they came up with about a year ago, they're going straight up to the Via Tangenziale. But if the Tangenziale is not working and has collapsed in one area, how do these people get out? And trust me, guys, if these 5 million plus people in the greater Naples area here that Pozzuoli is evacuating because the volcano is about to blow and you don't know how big it's going to blow. I am sure there's going to be panic in Naples and they will try to get out and all the roads will be clogged in a matter of minutes, in my opinion. So 6 million people trying to get out on that Via Tangenziale. And look at this current earthquake swarm where the epicenters are. Look at this epicenter. It's unfortunately right underneath that road. Sometimes I think, is that volcano telling them, it's not working. Get away from me now, right? So, and this is not the first time that we see an epicenter there. So it's not like they're clustered here all the time and then this is an oopsie. No, it's there all the time for years. We see these epicenters also underneath the Via Tangenziale. So that is a concern. And let's get back. I got carried away by this, guys. Let's get back to the bubbling road. Vesuvius. Vesuvius Observatory explains in a statement that they're investigating, they, now they call it bumps in the asphalt like bubbles um, reported on Via Antignana near a fumarolic field. The scientific body conducted thermal measurements, they say, and the conclusion is, quote, the results currently available do not indicate significant increases in temperature in the area inspected. Uh, yeah, what, what are you trying to tell us? 
So what they're trying to tell us is do not worry, the temperature is the same, but the temperature is high enough to turn the road into boiling asphalt. So great that it's not getting even higher, but it's already high enough. I mean, do you want to drive a on a road that has like 54 degrees Celsius? I, I would rather not. So then they further say, as can be seen from the published images, the photos taken with a drone equipped with a thermal camera show a maximum temperature on Via Antignana of 55.4 degrees Celsius. But how hot is it right underneath the asphalt if you go deeper? Well, they're showing us this graphic and they say the figure shows a photo composition of thermal images detected by the drone. The reported temperature is an average value measured by the drone at 90 meters above ground. So therefore they say residents can rest assured. Guys, really, let's discuss this. Let me know. If you live there, can you rest assured? Especially since there's continuous earthquakes, last bulletin, land is rising continuously. So honestly, let's translate this. What are they actually saying? We can rest assured, just ignore the bubbling road. Just not, nothing to see here. Why hasn't the road bubbled in, in the previous years? And now, yeah, they announce restoration work on Via Antignana. What is that going to do until it's bubbling again? So researchers visited the Via Antignana. That's what the press is saying. They measured the temperatures of the fumaroles, both the one beneath the asphalt and those on the upper side of that road. And Workers from the municipality of Pozzoli and the Civil Protection Department also arrived on site on October 1st, and then they were carrying out road repairs on the section that was blocked by a subsidence. So there's obviously also a subsidence on that road. Barriers were removed and two-way traffic was restored. I don't know, uh, guys. There's a big question mark popping above my head right now, right? I'm like, really? I mean, do we need to wait until someone drives over that and someone's seriously injured or even worse? There must, must be a reason why they closed the Solfatara crater for visitors to walk around on certain pathways because of the fumaroles, right? So then they further say the lower portion of the road near the entrance to the camp where a crack in the road surface occurred remained cordoned off. You see that picture here, there's a crack in the road. So have they done any 3D images of the ground underneath? Because then the press is further saying, according to rumors, the previous damage to the road was caused by rain. Oh, it's not just a manhole, it's now rain. I mean, really? So they say it's understood that part of a sewer pipe collapsed in recent months, but it wasn't the first time. Fumaroli gases also leaked from cracks in the road. Aha! So we have fumaroli gases leaking out, but it's the rain. So why are there then gases leaking out, right? Again, the big question mark. I honestly, guys, they should do a deep ground investigation. Remember Iceland when we had that magma intrusion in November 2023 and cracks were opening all over the place. They were filling the cracks with gravel and then, oops, they were breaking open again because the cracks were going way deeper than they thought. And then there was asphalt, the road looked fine, although there was already a cavity underneath. And then at some point the road, the asphalt gives in. A plumber that was parking on a driveway almost crashed into a crack. A, a worker's life was lost because he fell into a crack. So. They open up the road a day later. I don't know, guys. Am I crazy that I think they're crazy? I have locals watching. Let me know, guys. Are you worried about this? Would you drive or 
are you driving over that road? I'm, I'm honest, guys. I would not. And I don't think that in a day, measuring thermal images with a drone 90 meters, that's from high above without really looking what is underneath. I think they should have a much more detailed, longer investigation. Because that, that phenomena is not going to stop. So repaving the bubbles and then they'll come back in a week or two. So what's the point? Let's look at the earthquake swarm, guys. Um, I'm really interested in your opinion. So really give me your opinion in the comments. And uh, guys, uh, let's engage in a discussion with the locals that are posting. Um, I really want to hear from you. It's, it's really, I worry about you. I'm honest. I really do. This is such a stunning and beautiful area with beautiful people. I, I, I've been in Italy so many times. I love this country. So I don't want anything to happen to anybody. So earthquake swarm, look at the recent earthquakes while we're speaking. And these are only the ones above magnitude one. So we have smaller ones. So we probably have way more quakes. The last one, a 1.2, you see um, on October 2nd, 1.6, 1.6, 1.2, 2.2. That, that is in the higher range for a volcano. 1.4, 1.6, 1.2. 1 but you know, okay, we had one day break. We didn't have one on October 1st, but October, uh, September 30th, on the 29th, we had several earthquakes, 28th, then a little bit of a break, 25th. So this is ongoing. The people are rattled. And you know, it's not that we don't have seasoned INGB scientists warning that they would have liked to evacuate. And they have given these warnings before the current crisis even escalated. Um, over a year ago in May with the first 4.4. Roberto Scandone has said months before, if it was up to my decision, I'd evacuate right now. He's a seasoned scientist that has studied that volcano for decades. And you've seen my studies pop, pop, pop every day, almost a new study because they're looking at this volcano furiously, what's going on? And every study basically comes to a conclusion, yeah, something could happen. So yeah, guys, this was an update. Stay tuned. Um, I'll see you in the next one, I would say. There's lots of interesting stuff going on. Big tragedy going on in the Philippines, um, if you want to look at that. And if you want to fill me up with coffee, guys, do that. I have an empty coffee. It's a disaster. Buymeacoffee.com slash silky. Link is in the description. Thank you for being members of the channel and supporting the channel that way. And... Um, Thanks for liking, subscribing, and hyping the video. And uh, channel members, I'm going to release a video um, in, after this one. Um, I've had a rough time the last two days, and it still continues. And I, I will tell you about this, because uh, this is a crazy story. Um, stay tuned. Bye.